Hello everyone, Chaos here, and welcome to another old school RuneScape video. Today, my revamped 1 to 99 fire making guide. Fire making is by far one of the most intricate, engaging, and well designed skills in the history of gaming, period. With it, you mainly grab logs, light them up, and. well. That's pretty much it. Okay, jokes aside, even though we have like three viable ways to train this skill, it's actually used in a few quests, and most importantly, it has some niche uses at places like Guardians of the Rift, Eternal Fires for unlimited light sources, and so on. If you find this video useful, which to be quite honest with you, I'm doing this for consistency's sake, remember to subscribe with notifications on, and consider becoming a channel member with the join button below for tons of extra benefits in the channel. These are all the quests that provide a fire making experience as of the time of making this this video. Remember that some of them have a fire making level requirement and you may not be able to do them right away. This is one of the few skills in the game where gaining experience through requesting is absolutely not needed, as even the easy ones will take longer than simply getting the equivalent experience by burning logs, by getting them yourselves or even buying them on the ground exchange. But still useful to know. Now, in order to achieve level 99 fire making, you need absolutely no questing. But I will list a few of them you may want to keep an eye out on in order to access more content which involves this skill, which really is not a lot. The very first one is Shades of Morton. I will talk about an alternative method some people use for the first few levels to go by a lot quicker, and also for a second alternative method which also aids in training prayer. This skill is also needed for barbarian training. This whole requirement is very much needed for some activities in the game like going to the ancient cavern and a few clue scroll steps to mention a few, so it doesn't hurt to do it as soon as you can. I recommend the druidic ritual to unlock the herbler skill and the mini quest daddy's home for your first to 10 construction levels. With these two, you will be able to gain experience in said skills when we go to Winter Toad, and it really adds up in the long run. Last but not least, the quest to making friends with my arm will unlock access to fire pits, which are basically eternal fires with extra benefits at their specific region. I will quickly mention them here before we move on. Fires of eternal light can be set up at the Mole Cave, Lumbridge Cave, and the Mosler Harmless Cave so you don't need a light source anymore. The Fire of Nourishment is needed to plant herbs advice, the Fire of Dehumidification can be set up at the Mortmire Swamp to prevent your food from rotting, and the Fire of Unseasonal Warmth can be set up at the surface area of the God Wars dungeon to avoid draining stats. As it is to be expected, the very first few items you will need for fire making are logs and a tinderbox. Apparently, if you use gnome fire lighters on regular logs, they will light up immediately so the first few levels can fly by. Not really needed, but it's nice to know. For the second viable method, you will need at least four pieces of warm clothing. Here's a list of them, and if you're low level, the Clue Hunter outfit would be ideal since you can get it for free at any time. For this activity, you will be able to grab the Pyromancer outfits. Not only are they in the warm clothing category, but by wearing the full outfit, it will provide a 2.5% boost in fire making experience. Keep in mind that the gloves and the torch do not count for the skill outfit, but will go nicely with the set. For this skill, I only recommend two plugins. There's one simply called the Winter Toad, which will notify you of important things when training there. The other is Entity Hider, and if you join the official Winter Toad world, they are always going to be packed, so seeing less people will make it a lot better. Oh, and do not forget to turn off your public chat in here. I'm sorry, it's gonna kill a lot of brain cells, but if you enjoyed the generosity, you can keep it on. Alright, boys and girls, let's begin with the first method, which is going to be very easy and short. If you are a brand new account, you will go behind the Lumbridge Castle and start chopping logs. When you have a full inventory, stand on this tile and use your tinderbox on each one. Make sure to wait for them to be lit, and when your inventory is empty, simply do it again until level 15. You are then going to go to the rock's east entrance and cut these two oak trees near the guards. When your inventory is full, light them up and you will finish close to the entrance of the eastern bank. Rinse and repeat until you have achieved level 30 fire making and wood cutting for our next tree. After that, go to this spot between Drainer Village and Lumbridge to get started on Willow Logs. It's pretty safe and not a lot of people come here. When your inventory is full, go near this little building to light up the Willow Logs. Do this until you reach level 35. If you feel like it's too slow, you could stay at Oak Trees until level 35 and do Willows from 35 to 40, to also do the next step a little quicker. For our final stop, use the Castle Wars Teleport on your clan tab and then the minigame section. Go to the western part of the southern area where you will find a Teak Tree. And then do what you've been doing so far, this time with a new tree. Fill up your inventory, find a place to burn as many logs in a straight line as possible, 
and do this until you reach level 50 for our next viable method. So, after that excruciating, painful, and unbearable grind, it is now time to start... Well, another painful grind. Welcome to the Winter Toad Prison. This is where people typically level up from 50 all the way to 99, as it will provide great profits, collection log slots, and most importantly, the Phoenix Pets. I will explain how to do this in the mass world, and then solo, for less experience, but more points and loot. There are no requirements for this activity, and all you need to do is come to the northern part of Zea, and set up at the nearby bank. You may reach this place quicker with a games necklace and using the direct teleport. When you are there, copy the setup you see on screen and adjust according to what you have. Your four pieces of warm clothing are an absolute must, unlock with an axe in your hand, and at your inventory I recommend a hammer, a tinderbox, a knife, and as much food as you're comfortable with for one or multiple games. For mass worlds, we are going to avoid grabbing vials and herbs, as I will show you how they come into play for the solo run. When you enter, head to any of the braziers, either west or east. When a game is about to start, spam click the brazier to light it up for 25 free points. Stand on this save tile, which will be save from the snow attack. Start to chopping the roots and wait for a full inventory. Go next to the brazier again and do one of the following. For more experience, simply click on the fire to use your logs to weaken the winter toad. This will award you with 10 points each. You may also use a knife on the logs to turn them into kindle, and by using that on the braziers instead, you will gain 25 points when they are successfully used on the brazier. At any given point, you will see a light snow above the brazier, and after a few seconds, it will extinguish the fire, and you may light it up again for another free 25 points. You can take damage from three sources, all of which will interrupt you using logs and the kindle on the brazier. The first is passive damage, and you can't really do anything about it. The second is by standing next to the brazier when it's broken, for which you can move away from. And the third one is a 3x3 area where snow will fall. Make sure to avoid it since it hits like an absolute truck. When the brazier breaks, click on it to repair it for construction experience and more points, and then click on it again to light it up for even more points. As a final note, the pyromancers next to the braziers may also be attacked with snow. When they have taken enough damage, they will sit, and you won't be able to light up the brazier. To heal them, use an herb on a vial from the starting area, and use this potion on the pyromancer to get him back up. In mass worlds, a lot of people still do this, so I don't really think you need to worry too much about it. Keep cutting roots and then use the logs on the brazier, or fletching them and use a kindle on the fire to keep damaging the winter toad. Avoiding as much damage as possible, of course, and when the health bar on the top left corner reaches zero, the game will end and you will be awarded a hundred times your fire-making level in experience. You will also see this on the same part of the screen, and they represent the four braziers on every corner of the arena. A lit fire means that the brazier is doing okay, an unlit fire means that it needs to be lit up, a crafting icon means it needs to be fixed, and finally, a red magic hat means the pyromancer needs to be healed. Alright, so now we finish the game, what do we get out of it other than experience? Welcome to the point system. In short, you will get a reward crate after reaching 500 points. In a mass world, you would normally have between 500 and 1000 depending on your performance. If you achieved exactly 500 points, you will get two rewards from the crate. Any subsequent points will be a percentage chance of earning another loot roll for the crate up to a multiple of 500. Let's say that if you have 750 points, you have the two guaranteed loot rolls, plus a 50% chance of a third one. Up next, we will cover the solo method, and it's mostly the same, but with just a few changes. Since you will be doing the solo, you will need to grab healing potions for the pyromancers, so grab vials from the starting area. I also recommend more food, since you will be staying here for a little bit longer. Find an empty world, starting by going to each of the corner of the arena to light up the braziers, and on your way to each of them, grab some herbs to make your potions. Once all of them are ready, just go to the starting area where you won't take any damage, and then wait for the health bar to be below 20%. You will then need to light up or fix the two braziers closest to you, for the health to keep decreasing, as well as healing the pyromancers whenever they need to. When it's between 10 and 20% health, the lights will extinguish more frequently, but you may now chop roots. Remember that we are doing this for more loot but less experience, and if you want to stay here for longer, you will definitely have to balance out the fires. If you train too quickly, the Winter Toad will die which will end your run. To avoid this, just AFK for a few seconds while it recovers health. As for a final note, to do this for a maximum number of rolls, you should aim for 13,500 points. 
This equals to 28 rolls, which is the limit number of slots in your inventory, and any additional points might potentially go to waste. Go bank your loot and repeat any method of the Winter Toad we've seen until you hit 13 million experience for your fire making cape. We will now quickly go over three alternative methods. The very first one is by using sacred oil on logs. For some reason, you gain fire making experience by doing this, and according to the wiki, it's efficient to do it until level 30, so you can then start burning willow logs. I will be completely honest and tell you I have never done this for experience, but rather for my own pyre logs, but it doesn't hurt to know. And speaking of pyre logs, they are used to cremate shade remains at the Shades of Morton minigame. Go to Morton with both of these items in their corresponding tier, and use the pyre logs on one of these stone altars, followed by a shade remain. Finish it off by clicking on it to light it up, and you will send the spirit to a better place. They have a chance of leaving behind a key on the stone pillar next to it, which are used on the chests in the cave for some juicy loot. The final method is to simply keep burning logs until you have obtained the full Pyromancer outfit. I recommend doing this at level 90 because magic logs are way too expensive to train with, and honestly, you're much better off sticking to either U logs or lower. Or hey, even the Winter Toad until you hit level 90. Redwood logs are also pretty cheap, so your wallet will thank you for it. Last but definitely not least, it's important to mention that Jagex is working on an update called Forestry. This is mostly aimed towards woodcutting, but we know that fire making will be involved in one way or another. So, be on the lookout for that video in the future to learn more about how to train this god-awful skill. And now, for the roadmap from 1 to 99, I recommend following pretty much the guide exactly as I mentioned it. Normal logs from 1 to 15, oak logs from 15 to 30, willow logs from 30 to 35, and then teak logs from 35 to 50. Then, head to the winter toad from 50 to 99, or you can stop at 90 after we have obtained the full pyromancer outfit to start burning redwood logs. If you want to speedrun the 99, stick to the highest tier of log you can burn and then get ready to burn a hole in your pocket. You will go through arctic, maple, mahogany, yew, magic logs, before getting to redwoods for the final stretch. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is pretty much it for the fire making guide. Thank you so much for coming and for making it this far. If you did, make sure to tell me how you would get level 99 fire making, or if you already have it. A massive thank you to all my channel members, you boys and girls are absolutely amazing, and your support really does go a long way. If you want to be a part of this list of legends, click on the join button below to subscribe monetarily and receive a ton of benefits in the videos, in the live streams, and of course in the Discord. Stay tuned for the next video, and of course for the next 1 to 99 guide, where I will show you how to achieve mastery in the fletching skill. Have an amazing day, have an amazing week, and I will see you then. Ba 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 ba. Peace.